welcome to this podcast in a series developed by the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association. NJJA is a 501c3 not-for-profit public benefit association. The mission of NJJA is to improve services to youth in the juvenile justice system by serving as a resource for collaboration, leadership development, and education for juvenile justice system professionals and interested stakeholders. Our efforts are greatly enhanced with the generous support of the Sherwood Foundation. Please visit our website at njja.org to see a list of upcoming podcasts, as well as the opportunity to revisit those podcasts previously recorded. We welcome your thoughts as to, to potential podcast topics and interest. Welcome to the Juvenile Justice in Nebraska podcast, produced by the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association. <laughs> Episode 5, Juvenile Justice in Nebraska podcast. Well, I think uh, this has got to be our first on-site podcast. We're excited to have a couple guests here, but before we get there, let's take a little housekeeping duties here. May 6th and 8th, NJJA Conference in Kearney. Please, please, please be there. It's going to be a fantastic conference. We're looking forward to it. Um, all the presenters have, have been identified, so we know who's going to be presenting. We have the breakout sessions, um, almost all complete. Um, sponsorships. We still need some sponsorships, so please, if you're interested, contact us uh, through the website, uh, njja.org. Um, keynotes. We have a great lineup of keynotes this year. Um, has anybody heard Karen Vadino? Oh, Karen Vadino is absolutely hilarious. I'm looking so much forward to to getting the opportunity to listen to her again. She was with us about four years ago and just had all 400 people rolling with laughter. Hilarious. Uh, she's a motiv- motivational speaker. She's humorous. Um, it's just a, an all-around good time. So um, Adam Foss. Adam Foss is a former district attorney in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, he's going to be an ex- excellent addition to the NJJA service array here. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, John Tool and Carrie Harp from the uh, executive di- they're ex- the executive directors of the Robert F. National Resource Juvenile Justice Center. Robert F. Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy. Thank you. Robert F. Kennedy National Resources for Juvenile Justice. Um, they've been doing a lot of work with 3J probation, um, and, and I've got the opportunity to meet both Carrie and, uh, and John a couple times when they've done their site visits, and, and they are great people with a great wealth of knowledge that we're looking forward to. So um, today... We're here on site at the Youth Opportunity Center. We're going to have a program spotlight today. So if anybody's interested in having their program spotlight, um, please let us know. Contact us through the website. Um, But with that, let's get going here. Uh, Episode 5, we have uh, Christina Lloyd and Sydney Trejo with us uh, with Cedars Youth Opportunity Center, SOS, Street Outreach Services, and Bridges Program. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? Good. Pretty good. Good. Nervous? Mm, no no that's good that's good christina yes tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you what you do with cedars and, and your background um so i've been with cedars for almost 13 years now um and i'm currently what give or take a couple yeah yeah i'm trying to remember mm-hmm. 13 i think is right 12 12, 12 is right all right added one um i'm the program director for our street outreach youth opportunity center and bridges transitional living program Okay, perfect. Sid. Um, I've been with Cedars for, I'm going on my fifth year, but I haven't always been in this program. I previously was with Family Support. Okay. Um, but I've been in Bridges for a little over three years, uh, maybe four. Yeah. So have you guys have you guys both been in direct care, or have you always been in, in, the, in a director position? What, what does that look like? Uh, when I first started Cedars, I started at the TLC maternity group home. Um, I was there um, for about three years before moving into the transitional living mm-hmm. program. And while at TLC, I started as direct care um, and then moved into assistant program director um, before moving into the Bridges program. Excellent. Um, I actually started at Cedars as an intern for the diversion program. Um, I did 400 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, with them. It was a whole summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I started there, then moved into family support. I did that for about eight months as direct care. And then from there, moved into a direct care position with Bridges. Um, did that for two and a half years, maybe. <laughs> After that, uh, for about a year, I worked in the street outreach program as a street outreach specialist. 
And then just recently, um, I became the assistant program director for the Bridges program. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you. So going through all the, the direct care positions that you've had, I've got to imagine that that's been helpful with you transitioning into your new role. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel um, being in so many different direct care positions, I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, not only about like relationships with youth, um, but just about resources that I can now assist staff with mm-hmm. if they need any additional resources for youth. So is Christina your supervisor? Yes. How's that? No, I'm just kidding. Don't answer that. <laughs> no, please answer that. <laughs> She's great. No. <laughs> so here we are at the Youth Opportunity Center. Um, what is the Youth Opportunity Center? It's, it's, it's got a lot of different things in here that I, I can see, and, and I'm excited to hear and learn a little bit more um, about what you guys all do out of this place. Um, first, a little history between, be, yeah, please. behind the Youth Opportunity Center. So Cedars has had the Street Outreach Grant for nearly 20 years. It is a federally funded grant. Um, several years ago, we identified the need for just a safe place for youth to come um, that are experiencing homelessness or currently homeless, um, at risk of homelessness, ages 13 to 21. Um, so we did apply for additional funding through the federal government. And once we were awarded that funding, we opened the center in February of 2017. 2017. So you're going on almost three years then. Three years wow. of being open. Um, Always at this location down here? It has been downtown, yes. Um, we are open six days a week, and we provide basic needs to the youth. So youth can just stop in during open hours, get a warm meal, do laundry. Oh, wow get a food box. They can receive a food box weekly, mm-hmm. um, bus pass, hygiene, or they can just come in and hang out with staff, maybe play a game. We got an Xbox, watch a little TV, utilize the Wi-Fi. Um, it's just a safe place for them to come um, that they can feel supported. Mm-hmm. So a lot of fun activities, but I can't imagine that's all you do out of here. You said you have Xbox and games and things like that, um, which is all amazing for one. Um, but is, is that what all happens down here is it just fun and games or what what does that look like uh no so we sometimes have youth come in who uh, might be living on the street Mm -hmm. um they could have been placed uh previously in like a foster home and they're getting ready to age out um and they don't necessarily have an identified plan so they can come here and we're an access point for a coordinated entry all doors lead home sure so we can do um, those housing assessments with the youth. That assessment is about 26 questions. It gauges their risk level of homelessness, um, gives them a score, and then places them on the housing wait list. Okay. So, so Sid, you, you obviously have a lot of experience in other areas. Um, Christina, have you pretty much all been, you know, always, excuse me, the whole time you've been working here, have you been working with the homeless population? Uh, what, what does your history look like there? Um, since I moved into the Bridges and Street Outreach Program, um, it has been working with um, the at-risk and homeless mm-hmm. youth, as well as youth that are involved in juvenile justice or state wards. Um, but I'm also really active in the Lincoln Homeless Coalition. Oh, really? Tell me about that. Um, I'm currently the chair um, oh. until the end of January. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I've been doing that for the last two years as chair, but I've been part of the Homeless Coalition for probably seven or eight years. Um, and I've been the chair of the youth subcommittee since that time. And then also um, working with what's called the youth action board, which is part of the Lincoln homeless coalition. Um, It is youth that have experienced homelessness um, and they, it's their way of having a voice in services that are provided in the community and how we can better serve their needs. How important is that? How important is youth voice? I mean, it's, it's obviously important uh, to some degree um, in all of the areas that we work, whether it's juvenile justice, whether it's with the homeless population, but how important is that youth voice when it comes to um, the services that are uh, available for them? So they're really the experts. Mm -hmm. Um, They know what they need. While service providers might think we know what's best for them, we're not always right. So we really need those youth to help guide us and make sure our programs are efficient and meeting their needs. Um, So it's really vital. I mean, we have to have the youth um, engaged and they have to buy in and want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. That's really interesting and it's really reassuring uh to know that the youth voice is is, is being being heard um so uh, tell me a little bit more a kid walks into your front door for the first time 
Um, they may be looking for various things. Do you have staff here that greet them when they come in? Um, do they get assigned to staff? What does that look like on a day-to-day basis? Uh, so when the youth comes into the Youth Opportunity Center for the first time, um, our staff desks are right up front. So they would see the staff right when they walk in. Staff would greet them. Um, we have some pretty basic demographic paperwork that they have to fill out. It just asks like name, date of birth, where they've been staying, so we can get a better idea of things they might be in need of. Um, but then from there on out, uh, the following times they come in, they're not necessarily assigned a staff. Um, all the staff that are down here are just good people for mm-hmm. them to reach sure. out to. Um, the staff that they met the very first time might not always be the staff that's here when they're here, but we try and have them meet all of the staff so they're familiar with somebody at sure. least. So a lot of these kids are, the vast majority of the kids are, are experienced homelessness or, or near homelessness um, from what I understand you guys saying. One of the ways that we can, uh, that, that you guys assist um, the young people getting out of homelessness, job hunt maybe or job search or what does that look like? Is that, is that a service that you offer? Yes. Yeah, so um, we actually have computers here, both um, desktop and laptop computers that the youth can utilize. Uh, I've helped, personally, I've helped a lot of youth uh, with resumes. Okay. Um, a lot of jobs nowadays ask for a resume, even if you have very few things to put on it. It's kind of a requirement when you're applying online. So I help youth fill out a resume and then email it to them so they always have a copy of it if they ever are no longer in services with us. Um, and then... Staff just sit down, have them kind of scroll through the jobs. We also have a job board that we try and update frequently of jobs um, that are available at this time and a general area of where they're located in town. Mm -hmm. We don't want a youth to get a job that's 10 miles away from where they're staying. It makes it difficult for them to get there. Uh, But, yeah, staff will look over their application and then get it turned in. So looking around um, with you guys' location, I mean, it's pretty much dead downtown Lincoln, Nebraska. So it's pretty ideal, I mean, for the most part. Yes. Yeah. You got a lot yeah. of things around here. Um, what happens? How does a kid get down here if they live six miles away? Do you guys offer transport? What does that look like? How do how does, how, how they get here? So um, we will meet the meet the youth where they're at. So if it's an initial meeting and they've never met with us before, we're happy to go to them. Um, A lot of our referrals do come from Lincoln Public Schools. So we tend to meet with a lot of youth at high schools, at which time we will provide them with a bus pass. We're just just a couple blocks from the main bus station. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that when we were looking for a location, we were very adamant that we had to be downtown near the bus stop. Okay, so so your staff's not... I don't want to use the word stuck, but they're not they're not idle here in their youth opportunity center. They're in the community as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Um, so you have these kids that come in. You mentioned coordinated entry. Um, what happens after that? They're on the coordinated entry list. Um, how do you work with them to obtain housing? Um, what are the steps with that? Who offers the housing for the youth um, and that good stuff? So um, the youth are required to check in. We, I try and tell youth about one to two times um, every few weeks. That way we can maintain contact with them and go in and make a note that they're still in need of housing. It also gives us the opportunity to update if their situation has changed at all. Uh, but in that time period when they're checking in, um, we still assist them with all their basic needs And then when it comes time for them to get a place, Mm -hmm. um, for youth primarily, I would say Cedars or Centerpoint are more um, gauged to housing youth, specifically those youth that might be under 19. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, we just assist them with reaching out to any other providers who might be able to help. We have youth who have gone all the way to like Garing, Nebraska before oh, wow. because they have transitional living programs there that the youth are eligible for. Go ahead, Christina. And and usually the Lincoln programs are somewhat, Lincoln has a much larger wait list than- um, On coordinated entry. Yes. Got it. So oftentimes the youth might be on that list for a while. And so sometimes moving outside of Lincoln um, is an option they're willing to do and they can get housed quicker. Mm-hmm. Um 
I would say as of yesterday, there were 89 youth on the housing wait list. Oh, wow. And that's just for Lincoln and Lancaster County. Oh, my goodness. That does not include Omaha. It does not include Kearney, Hastings. No. no. Scott's, oh, my goodness. Okay. So we have a lot of work to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so those youth that come into the Youth Opportunity Center, um, is it all private youth? Are they involved in DHHS? Are they juvenile justice? As you know, this broadcast is, is primarily ju- juvenile justice focused, but um, we know that there's plenty of families out there that, uh, that are in need. Um, I would say we have a really good mix of youth that um, are young adults, so that 19 to 21. Um, But we also have youth that are state-involved, system-involved. We actually have juvenile justice probation officers that will bring youth in um, Mm -hmm. to help get their needs met. That is Um, So sometimes it's the food box. Wow, that's really cool to hear. Yeah, bus pass. So um, we're trying to make sure um, those service providers know who we are and what we do so that we can assist any youth that is facing homelessness. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do work with a lot of kids that have recently aged out of um, the child welfare system or juvenile justice. So it's a it's a mix. So if you're a service provider out there, a case manager, whoever, I'd definitely come down and, and check this place out. The, it sounds like the resources they have are, are endless. And, and if you have a family or a youth uh, in need of some of these services, come check it out. Uh, what's the, what is the address here, guys? 318 South 13th Street. 318 South 13th Street, right across from, looks like, the Embi- or the uh, Cornhusker? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, okay, so SOS, obviously, Street Outreach Services is a federal grant. Christina, you mentioned that. Yes. Um, m- moving on a little bit here, let's talk a little bit about Bridges. You guys both mentioned Bridges. Um, what is Bridges? Um, Bridges is a transitional living program. Um, which is a little bit different than independent living because when they're in the transitional living, they're going to have more support. Um, They're going to be assigned a family partner, which is a staff member that's going to work with them um, to help develop those self-sufficiency skills um, and any goals that they want to work on while in the program. Uh, The Bridges program houses... um, Lots of different youth. We can house um, youth that are 17 to 19 that are involved in the Department of Health and Human Services um, as state wards or juvenile justice youth, um, as long as their permanency plan is identified as independent living. And then we also have several grants that allow us to work with um, young adults up to the age of 24. Um, And we have some grants that are very specific to pregnant and parenting youth. That sounds like a lot of different. It is a lot of different populations. How how are all those funded? Are those, those all funded under one one federal grant, or what does that look like? So, um, the Bridges program, we do have HUD, which is Housing and Urban Development. We have funding through them, um, and then we also have RIE, which is the Runaway and Homeless Youth, um, and that is funded through the Family and Youth Services Bureau at a federal level. Um, and I kind of like to brag a little bit, but um, Cedars is one of fourteen agencies that receive all four federal grants from the Department of Health and Human Services. All uh, 14 in the state of Nebraska? In the country. In the country. We are one of 14 agencies in the country. Oh, wow. That receive street outreach funding, transitional living, maternity group home, transitional living, as well as basic center, which is our emergency shelter. Have you had all four for a lengthy period? Um. We recently um, re-received the maternity group home grant. We okay. had lost it for a short time, for about five years. Um, we re- reapplied and were just re-awarded that. So the other three have been very long-standing. So the term maternity group home is a little confusing. Um, you're talking about apartments or or, yes. or facilities that you guys are working. What is that? What is just clear? Maternity maternity group home. Um, it can be in a group home setting okay. or in scattered site apartments and Cedars chooses to use that in scattered site apartments. Are all funding sources scattered site apartments in all a RHY yes. HUD? It is. Yes. How many apartments you guys have? I believe we have 29 right now. And we also have um, housing for youth um, outside of Lincoln and Southeast service area through permanent supportive housing with HUD. So that is in your 29 or? In that a, is not in included. addition. Oh my goodness. Sid. Yes. How do you guys manage all this? Yeah. I don't know <laughs> how just Christina do. did it you, by herself. You just do, huh? I don't know that. Yeah. You just do. So so since this is a, a juvenile justice podcast, let's talk about that population a little bit. Um, you mentioned that probation can take advantage of your apartments. Um, 
what does that look like? Um, what type of kids are you looking for? Is it strictly three, three J Lancaster County youth? A lot of questions there, but I'll let yeah. you go from there. So we can serve any juvenile justice. It does not have to just be Lancaster County youth. Um, so a probation officer in Scotts Bluff could make a referral. Um, they do make a referral to the Cedars um, referral, um, our intake specialist, at which point then they forward it directly to Sydney and I, um, and we determine if the youth is appropriate for placement. So when I say that, typically we're looking for um, what level of care they're currently residing in. Um, to make sure that they don't need a potential step-down level of care. So a youth that's currently in a YRTC and maybe has been for mm -hmm. a year, year and a half, usually um, we would request that they have a step-down level of care prior to our program. Um, they can remain in the program up until the age of 19 or till their case closes. Um, we will um, look at 17-year-olds. Um, it really just, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes we are looking at, you know, those, the law violations that they've had. If they're sure. very significant law violations, um, we may not be the best program for them. Would, um, would you consider them after a certain amount of, certain amount of time, though? It, it, let's say they have a very serious law offense. Mm -hmm. And, and it, at that point, they're a definite, definite no for the Bridges program. Would you look at that two, three, four, five months down the road if things are going well with them? Yeah. Or? So typically what I'll let them know is... Um, if they're able to maintain and show that stability in their current placement, then I'm willing to reevaluate. Okay. So are they talking single room apartments, double room apartments? We have um, roommates. How does that look? Uh, right now for uh, state ward and probation youth, we have three single apartments. <laughs> I think three single apartments and... No, two single apartments and three um, apartments that are two bedrooms, so they would have a roommate that they'd share the apartment with. Okay, so so is there an opportunity for a youth to be involved with SOS before? Do you, is there an opportunity for them to go through bridges after SOS? How, Street Outreach Services has has some communication with them. What does that look like? Do you guys work together, um, considering that you guys both supervise both programs? Yeah, I would say the Street Outreach Program and the Bridges Program work really closely together. Um, if a youth is coming from, say, Scotts Bluff and they aren't familiar with the area, uh, the family partner that's assigned to work with them in the Bridges Program often brings them down to the Youth Opportunity Center just to get a feel for it and then um, make them aware of all the services that are available for them here at the Youth Opportunity Center. So... This is a difficult population you guys are working with, obviously. Uh, it's a fun one, it sounds like, um, but difficult nonetheless. What does what does training look like for your staff um, in regards to programming, um, you know, on-site programming? Uh, obviously, the agency probably does some sort of training uh, for new staff. What does that look like? So Cedars has a really great training. Um, it's about a week-long training. Um, we really focus on that trauma-informed care. We use a risk and connections model. Um, we provide outreach worker safety, um, safety and risk management, as well as like um, trainings surrounding like child abuse and neglect. Mm -hmm. um, and then the program provides really hands-on shadowing and training. Um, with the street outreach program, it, it's, it's a lot of training because things are constantly changing in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's always learning with the street outreach program. Um, there's times where you will learn about something you're like, wow, I had no idea that program was even around and it's been here for a year and a half. Um, and then the Bridges program, um, it's about 40 hours of shadowing before a staff is allowed to um, start working with youth, mm -hmm. um, sometimes even a little bit longer. Um, and luckily for us, we are a small team. So the street outreach and the Bridges staff are really cross trained. Um, they can really kind of work either program in times of need. So no doubt that that there's a need for services like you guys provide. Um, and I, I'm fully aware of, of some of the other services that are out there um, with some of the great organizations in the community. Do we have enough resources and services for our homeless population, specifically our homeless youth? Um, and if we don't, uh, where can we go? What can we do to, 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 re to meet that demand? I would say there's not enough services. I mean, there's 89 youth who are Oh, currently gosh, listed as literally homeless or couch surfing and not in a stable living environment. So 
we could definitely use more housing resources. I Yeah, I would agree. The housing is the biggest barrier for our youth. Um, so being able to provide them safe housing as well as um, shelter. Um, ideally, having like a transition age youth shelter would be amazing. Um, so serving those youth 18 and under. Mm -hmm. um, and then also being able to really case manage them. Mm -hmm. So be more hands on. Because um, then they may be able to potentially self-resolve um, and no longer need the homeless service providers. Um, as far as what we can do, um, it's a matter of money. We need more funding <laughs> to create housing. Mm -hmm. um, the city of Lincoln will actively um, pursue the youth homeless demonstration grant that will be released here soon from um, HUD, Housing and Urban Development. Um, the balance of state received that about two years ago and received a little over $3 million. So the city of Lincoln will apply for that when it is released. So the, the, the YHDP. Yes. It was $3.8 million that this, the balance of state received. Yes. So do, everywhere outside of Lincoln and Omaha. Okay. Does Cedars, do they have a program within that or, or they, do they, are they a part of that? So Cedars does have permanent supportive housing. Um, Permanent supportive housing. Yes. What is permanent supportive housing? So permanent supportive housing is long-term housing assistance um, for individuals with disabilities. Um, and that disability is um, could be mental health. It could be substance abuse, um, physical disability. So it's pretty wide range. Um, and so we do house youth in the Southeast service area um, through our permanent supportive housing. So we provide rental assistance and then case management. Okay. Okay. Um, so a question that I have written down here, because I'm really interested. You said that there's 89 kids on coordinated entry? Yeah, give or take a couple. Give or take a couple. Um, you guys have 29 plus scattered side apartments um, that include Lincoln and Southeast Service Area. How many? I'm going to put you on the spot here. How many kids do you guys have placed in apartments today? Um, we are actually... Um, oh, gosh. I... Honestly, I would have to count. I can tell you our um, maternity group home, the MGH. Mm -hmm. um, we are still um, trying to find a staff um, <laughs> so, so that we can start housing process. youth in that program. <laughs> um, so we do have those apartments. We have one youth currently in the program. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still seven open apartments with that program. So you're probably looking at, I mean, just put, doing some numbers here, probably 20 plus kids yes. placed in apartments right now. Mm -hmm. And what is what? how many staff do you have working with those kids placed in apartments? We have um, one staff that is working with the permanent supportive housing youth and some probation and state ward youth. Uh, we have one full-time family partner who works with all of the RI youth. RHY. Uh-huh. Um, and then we have one full-time family partner that works with all of the HUD youth. And uh, one of our street outreach staff is transitioning, so she is still case managing a few um, probation youth currently. Okay, so it's not a big team by any means. I mean, it's yeah. we're not talking ten people here, so we're um, it's busy. Yes, but we're also not talking eight hundred kids either. So what I'm hearing is it's a small team who holds small caseloads. Those small caseloads. Talk to you about because I, I'm going to guess that's probably on purpose to have those small caseloads. Um, why? Why the small caseload versus working with 12 kids at a time? Um, so we don't allow family partners to have more than eight youth at one time. And that is intentional because we feel like um, it's the quality of care that we're providing, not the quantity. Mm -hmm. um, so the smaller caseloads allows those family partners to meet with those kids on a more consistent and regular basis and provide um, the quality care that we want to make sure they're receiving while in the program and meeting their needs. If we were trying to case manage 20 kids, um, we would not have the program that we currently have, mm -hmm. which um, has a very high success rate with discharges. So what what is that success rate uh, of those kids that are leaving the program successfully? Um, it's usually right around 95%. Um, and I'm just going to put in a little plug. We had a, a federal review from HUD, Housing and Urban Development. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the first time they'd been to our program um, since being a transitional living model. Mm -hmm. And they had actually quoted that um, our transitional model was like 
um, the best they'd ever seen. It oh, was wow. it was really like the model it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and they were very impressed with um, our staff and the program. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that. Well, I got to imagine that you got, I mean, it's a federal grant, so there's got to be federal, federal measures too that you have to uphold too because the feds aren't just going to say, here's some money, good luck. No, um, definitely not, HUD. <laughs> HUD or RHY, I'm guessing. Um, so this federal grant, it's not solely for the state of Nebraska, correct? There's other states who receive federal funding um, through RHY. Um, do you guys have any connection with these other funders or excuse me, these other providers that are providing similar services in other states? Do you get a chance to talk with those to see what's working, what's not working? Um, I have no idea what the need in Lincoln versus the need in Missouri looks like. Do you have an opportunity to, to bounce ideas with one another? So, um, we do, uh, there are, um, we, we are active in different um, community groups within those funding sources. So via internet, we can ask questions to other providers, mm -hmm. um, kind of bounce ideas off each other, as well as we have monthly calls that allow us to talk to everyone and kind of understand that we're all kind of going through some of the same challenges and problems and see what has worked for other programs. Um, when we were looking at opening the drop-in center, we actually toured multiple drop-in centers um, to kind of get an idea of what we really were looking for and what we thought was a great model to kind of model ours after. Excellent. Um, what about sharing at a conference? What, what's the continuing education look like uh, for, for your team? Uh, so RHY does offer a conference each year. Um, they pick a different location and like on our team, staff have the ability to attend. Uh, they have a platform where you go out and breakout sessions. Um, so you get to pick the breakout sessions that seem most applicable to your program. Uh, you can take, I know the last time I went to the RIE conference, I took away um, some great ideas for us to utilize in our parenting group. Um, ways to get the girls connected to one another to let them feel like they're building connections and mm -hmm. not just sharing their personal lives with some people they just met. So it's just some great icebreaker activities. Excellent. So part of the podcast, one of the things we wanted to do um, was bring on uh, a very special guest. Um, we have with us DJ. DJ, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So DJ um, actually received some services from our Street Outreach program, from the Street Outreach program here at Cedars. Um, DJ, talk a little bit about that. What 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 do you get um, from the Street Outreach services, and just how important is it to you? Um, currently, I am currently I'm getting helping getting housing through Cedars mm -hmm. and Centerpoint. Like during the day when I don't have nothing to do, I come here, hang out, talk to them. They help me figure out what I need to do. They give me clothes food they just let me sit play a game mm -hmm. how's the food is it any good oh uh, it's, it's fantastic <laughs> is it that's yeah. good to hear that's good to hear um next time you come make sure you invite me all right i like food i got you man yeah so no um so the sos program it seems like it's pretty important to to you obviously dj and, and i'm assuming to many others yes um what 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 type of what does this do for the community as a whole well from what i've seen it really helps the community because it, it helps t it helps teenagers and well preteens, adults, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people people like around my age. It helps them get off the street, helps them figure out what they need to do, and helps them get ready for life. Yeah, that's 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 so that's so awesome to hear. Um, so you come here, you, you you play games, you get a meal. Um, I see a washer and dryer back there. You can do your laundry. Um, you get to see this fine staff here. Um, which one of them is your favorite? No, don't answer that. Don't, <laughs> don't answer that. I was about to say, if I did, it would, it would be hard. <laughs> um, so what else do you want to share um, about about the, the the Street Outreach Center, or excuse me, the uh, Street Outreach Services or or the Youth Opportunity Center? Honestly, it, honestly, if, if you're a teenager or 20, about to be 21, before you hit 21, come down to, come down to the Cedars downtown or whichever one you could go to. Get as much help as you can and see how far it takes you. So, was this was this easy to find for you? How how did you find out about it? Honestly, before I knew about Cedars, I was just walking downtown, just doing my own thing. I was new to Lincoln, so I really didn't like 
really know anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, and then somebody at the mission actually told me about Cedars. So I came down. I walked by it one time, and then I asked one of the work. I asked one of the workers outside. Mm -hmm. I'm asking them where Cedars at, and they pointed me to it. Mm -hmm. So that led me to it, and ever since then, I've been coming here. You've been coming here ever since. Mm -hmm. and obviously, you feel welcome in this environment. Um, they create a welcoming environment. It, it's 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 warm in here, which has got to be got to be nice. Um, you know, it, it's really really neat to see a young person like yourself, DJ, um, utilizing the resources that are available to you. Um, so I commend you for that. Uh, you know, best of luck with everything that that you have in the future. No doubt that that you're gonna you're gonna um, do well in life. Um, but please, I would highly recommend you continue contact with these people here at the Youth Opportunity Center. Um, it's it's clear that they have your best interests in mind. Um, uh, so again, thanks for coming down. And, and um, if there's anything else you want to share with us, by all means, please do so. Um, but it, it's just re really uh, reassuring to know that uh, that we have young people like you who are, are willing to, to come down here, ask for help, and then receive that help. Thank you. The, really, the only thing I got, the last thing I got to say is, it, like I said, if you're if you're around the teenage years, about to be 21 or before then, if you're looking if you're looking for a warm place and warm people to hang around and that makes you feel like you have a family, come down to Cedars. Oh wow, I think that's really good to end on right there, um, DJ. Thank you so much. No problem, man. Bye, right, bud. So Christina and and said first of all. Um, Thank you for the time today. This has been really, really um, educational for me. Um, you know, it makes me concerned with the 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 how big as need is that we do have in the city of Lincoln. Um, it also makes me wonder what's going on in other communities. Um, but again, thank you for what you do. I, I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Um, you guys are pretty well established here in Lincoln, and and for those that are interested in learning more um, about SOS uh, or bridges. Um, how can they get a hold of you? Um, what does that look like? And and uh, um, maybe just if you have if you're willing to share some contact information for us. Um, so for the Youth Opportunity Center, uh, Rico said it before, but we're located at three one eight South Thirteenth Street here in Lincoln. Um, if you're wanting to get a hold of any of the street outreach specialists, uh, you can contact four zero two four three seven eight eight five zero. Otherwise, um, if there's any youth that are in need of services and they want to reach out, they can get a hold of us through our Facebook page. Um, it's under Cedars Street Outreach Services. Okay. And Christina, what's your contact information if, if there's other people out there that want to learn more about, uh, m about the programs? Um, I can be reached at 402 770 Perfect. Well, again, I, I can't thank you enough for you guys' time. It's It's been a, an education experience for me, and um, I'm looking forward to, to following what you guys do. Um, but again, before we wrap up, NJJA Conference, uh, March 6th through the 8th at the UNIS Conference Center. Be there. Um, we're looking to uh, exceed the number that we had last year, and, and, and I think last year we had roughly about 450 um, people, so so please sign up. Um, check out njja.org. Um, hope to see you there. Uh, check out the bios. I do want to say check out the bios for our presenters. Um, I think you're you'll be uh, surprised. So again, uh, signing off. Thanks so much. Bye. So today we we spotlighted uh, we spotlighted Cedars um, Youth Opportunity Center, uh, Street Outreach Services, and uh, the Bridges Program. Please, if you're a provider out there and you want a program spotlight, we are happy to do that for you guys. Um, there's amazing people doing amazing work here in the state of Nebraska, um, all across the state. So if you're interested and have a program spotlight, let us know. Um, just send us an email on, online. You can go to njja.org. NJJA there's a form there you can fill out um, on the under the podcast tab. Uh, check it out. Send us an, some information. We'd be happy to reach out to you. Thanks. Thanks.